Security Booth is a rare experience in the realm of indie horror, where the game's core mechanic and the overall story is so well executed that you end up begging for more. Security Booth successfully tells a gripping story with twists and turns, while still letting the player figure out the story for themselves. In this video, I will be dissecting the hidden mysteries of Security Booth. This video will have spoilers, so I recommend that you, you play the game for yourself. It's $5 on Steam, why not? The game starts out with a little description. The year is 1996. You're employed by a science lab called Nova Nexus. You work as a security guard at the front gate, inside a guard booth. However, tonight seems something important is happening, and things are, well, a little strange. The game starts out with what one might expect. You start within a security booth, with the ability to check the logs for license plate numbers, and the ability to open and close the gate. But it doesn't take long to realize that that something strange is a bit more paramount than one might expect. As time progresses in the game, things start appearing outside the security booth. Many paper logs appear with some very interesting text written by this mysterious A.S. Some people have started to change their minds about what they're doing after a few mishaps with the classified. The director apparently has spoken with classified and according to him they have told us to push forward. I'm glad of this news. My hands are shaking. I'm so excited. We are so close to finishing this experiment. We've had a few accidents. Someone called Natasha died last week. It's all worth it in my opinion. She helped us in more ways she'll ever know. The director was sent home on the 23rd for being sick. He was spouting some nonsense about something moving in the shadows. Someone thinks classified on the day Natasha died. Since that day, I keep feeling like I'm being watched. Something moving in the shadows. I'm sure it's from overworking myself. A.S. Over the span of just 16 days, this person has witnessed a lot. For some reason, they have written down what they have found. We know that this Natasha has died. Apparently a scientist within the lab and that the director of the lab no longer is going to the lab because he's going insane or perhaps something is lurking in the shadows. As the game progresses, things get more and more weird. Red handprints start appearing, mysterious shadowy figures start looking at you, ghost cars appear. All of this leads up to a climactic ending, and depending on your actions, something different may occur. And once you found a couple of the endings, you're able to look at some footage. In the first variation of this, we're able to find some logs within it. Incident Report 01449. Natasha Singh. Kara Montgomery. Andres Stavis. Incident details classified. Nature and extent of injuries, if applicable. Death of Natasha Singh. Unsure. No body found. Of course the body wasn't found. It went through. Please take Natasha off all records. Date unknown. I got a call offering me a job. It was a place called Nova Nexus. And it really sounded like a nice job. The more I think about it though, I'm pretty sure I never applied to this place. Either way, I'm going to take it. After weeks of tests, we finally started classified. Today was mind-blowing. Classified, it was fantastic. We even heard something coming from it. What was it though? It was so alluring, but also familiar. I've been listening to the sound that we managed to capture over and over again. It changes every time you play it, even though it's the same audio file. I find myself staring into the darkness so much more recently. Something keeps moving in the shadows. Five legs, no skin just bones. They called my name, I answered. All I remember after is the taste of iron in my mouth, crimson droplets on the floor. They come, the void lurking in the shadows. Ruin will ruin upon us. Taking in some context clues, we can assume that what we just read is from Natasha Singh. 
the person presumed dead. Apparently, she was not even really qualified to get the job at Nova Nexus, but she was offered the position anyway. But as it turns out, she was just a guinea pig for a much larger and darker plot. But this is not the end of Natasha Singh's story. What if I told you that you interact with Natasha Singh at the beginning of the game? While checking people into the building, you will get a series of phone calls. Some will be errors, some will be protocol, but then you'll get a call with some static, with a female voice saying, help me. And when you turn around, a ghostly figure will be there. And when you attempt to interact with them, they disappear. And then soon after that, a car will appear. And the phone will ring at the same time. If you choose to answer the phone, the car will immediately disappear. But if you don't answer the phone, you can check their license plate. And when rung up with the system, the license plate belongs to Natasha Singh. If you interact with the car, she will say the same thing. Help me. I'm scared. Somehow, Natasha Singh is still able to contact the real world. Whatever Nova Nexus is doing, and whatever human sacrifice was performed in some arc, some portal that they've created, has allowed for the supernatural to occur. Another secret we discovered has to do with the Kraken Division. Error 079932. Hi, does anyone know who in NAT team put the error code 079932? Check email below for more information. Who the hell put in this error code? The system is set up for real emergencies. Alert. Someone is microwaving fish. This needs to go. Dennis. This may appear as comical even, that an alert was sounded for microwaving fish. And perhaps humor is being used as a guise here. Because once you make it to the meeting room of the same area, a D&D &D session is being played. But what's very interesting is one of the characters on the D&D &D board. Krakoon. Race. Kraken. Class. Shapeshifter. Krakoon lives in the depths of a salted sea in an ancient city known as Atlantis. Krakoon is able to shapeshift from Kraken to human whenever they need to. He hates people who fish and eat fish and has assassinated many people by turning their arm into a tentacle and crushing them. His killings are known by many people, but no one knows it is him as he spends most of his time as a human. It's experiences like this that get me excited to play video games again. I've really enjoyed Security Booth, and what you have just watched is half of what I have found. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know and hopefully part two will get to you very soon.